Hey, this is Tom Walt, IDW's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles writer, and you are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Hi, this is Bobby Kerno, Chief Turtle Editor at IDW Publishing, and you are going to have a shell of a good time inside the pull bag. You've just jumped inside the pull bag. Join TFG1 Mike and the rest of the comic crew here at the GCRN as they make their great escape into comics. From DC, Marvel, and Image to IDW, Boom Studios, and Xenoscope, we have everything right here. We cover things like Transformers, He-Man, Superheroes, TMNT, and Radiant Black. Yeah, we have all that and so much more. It's all inside the pull bag here on the GeekCast Radio Network. So, without further ado, it's time to talk about the comics we're reading right now. Here inside the pull bag. Hello and welcome to The Pull Bag. Also, folks, we are from the command center because it is time that the Turtles and the Power Rangers converge. And no, this is not any DeMilo notice here, folks. That's way, way later. <laughs> uh, I'm, of course, TFG and Mike. This is, as I said, episode 478 of The Pull Bag. This one's a little late, delayed in getting out, but it is going to be getting out on time. Episode 479 with my buddy Jesse Raz is us talking about volume 14 of the Boom Studios Power Rangers, uh, the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series. So we finish that off, and then episode 480 will be an Origins episode. Joining me for the first time with this specific trade is Mr. Joe Reed. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, There's a a good reason that I'm joining you on this Power Ranger podcast, (laughs) because (laughs) our boys the Turtles showed up. That's right. That is right. Oh, man. Woo. Yes. So because this is a crossover between the pull bag and from the command center, because this does have to do with comic books and Power Rangers as well as the Turtles, what is your history with the Power Rangers, sir? I was going to ask you the same thing because I know <laughs> you guys have covered the the Power Rangers podcast and probably other mm-hmm. things as well. But uh, for me, uh, I well, hey, I just turned forty two, so like I am the answer <laughs> to all life's questions now. But uh, being forty two, the Power Rangers hit me just a little bit too late. I think I was in middle school. And when I watched it, it was just starting, that kind of thing was just starting to get a little awkward and a little childish. Uh, and I watched it remembering and thinking like, oh man, this this is a ripoff of Voltron. Like, <laughs> I had no yep. clue. Like, this is a thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And we, I watched it. I watched it. It was martial arts and giant robots. Mm-hmm. All right, that's cool. And I remember at one point, I think in eighth grade, uh, my friend Eric and I went to the movie theater to watch the Power Rangers movie because, you know, we were, you know, too cool for, but no, we went. And I remember making a joke with the lady behind the ticket counter. Yeah, we're, we're previewing it for his sister. Yeah. And I'm like, what, 12 years old. So that like joke didn't directly plan across, but I, I respect the Power Rangers for what they are. And, and Mm -hmm. I, I think, that given a, an interesting, mature adult take, there might be something way cool happening. With I really think it needs to be animated, um, probably by the people that did Voltron. But no, it's it's amazing. It's cool. And an, an entire generation of children have been inspired by the Power Rangers and everything else, all the other iterations of them that have come after that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm... <laughs> well, the sad thing, Joe, is we can only be the answer to everything for one year of I our know. lives. And then- <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing after that. Uh, for me, <clears throat> for anyone that's listening to this on from the command center, you all will know from the previous X number of episodes that I have been a diehard Ranger fan since I was 13 in those middle school years because all of the people I hung out with, they all wanted to, like, after the movie came out in 95, they all wanted to go skydiving. <laughs> be open. I just watched yep. that. Like, I don't know why. I think maybe it was one of my kids. Like, they found it, and uh, we, we watched that. So, yep. That was such a crazy thing. Yes, yes, it is. And I have had the pleasure over the years, since 2011, since we started from the command center, to talk to several of the people that worked in Rangers. Uh, 
may he rest in peace, but I did an interview back in 2011 with both Barbara Goodson and Robert Axelrod. Robert Axelrod was the voice of Lord Zed. Oh, wow. And Barbara is the voice of Rita. I've also talked with Jason David Frank, Karen Ashley, Daniel Southworth. Uh, Who else have I talked with from this show? Uh, It's... There's a bunch that I still want to talk with. Yeah, I think those are the I think those are the main four that I've that I've talked with. Daniel Southworth was from a, a a future incarnation of it. He was from the Time Force season. He played the the sixth Ranger of that series, the Quantum Ranger. But I've always been a little fascinated, a lot fascinated with David Yost and his story. I don't know how much mm-hmm. that the old days he, he's willing to talk about, but I know I see him at cons, but yeah. from two different angles. Uh, yeah. I want to thank him for like sticking it out and being there. And on the other hand, uh, I also want to thank him for being one of the first geeky, nerdy kids that made it cool to be geeky, nerdy. Mm-hmm. Like that really was the birth of, of the, the turn from dorks being exactly like Billy was in that show to actually being respected. And I know later in the TV series, he was kind of the mentor character back at the headquarters for the team of power Rangers. And that was cool to see. Yeah. So, so basically, and I, I don't know the behind the scenes of it. And I, I have yet to ever interview David, Mr. Yost, uh, maybe one of these days I will. I only know what I've seen him talk about in various convention panels and things like that. I don't know the behind the scenes. I know the way the character was, was that in the show, he wanted to do more of the, the Billy stuff, more of the geeky stuff, more of the inventing, more of the, I don't want to sit here and belittle it down to tech support, but we we had new rangers coming in and there's only so many powers and billy was like yeah sure i'll you know whatever i'll stay back here with alpha and make all this cool stuff that people can use so that's what i remember of it if i'm wrong folks you can email me and let me know how wrong i am <laughs> uh, but power rangers has been a thing for me for you know the 30 years it's been around at least the you know American version of it, and there are certain seasons I I have watched all of them. I will go back and watch some more than others. Um, if you're following certain characters' trajectory, there is a specific trajectory you can follow with the shows that gets this character's entire story, which is obviously Tommy Oliver, Jason David Frank's character. Uh, he came back in Dino Thunder, and that was a really, really cool season. I like the Time Force season because you know, everybody wants to do time travel, <laughs> whether it's to the future or to the past or whatever. So Time Force was a unique, cool thing. And, yeah, I mean, and, you know, we've got Boom Studios with their with their Power Rangers comics and everything that they've done to this point, and it's just so much fun and – how can you how can you say no to a TMNT Power Rangers team? Up? Yeah, that's I mean, really I mean, yeah, that's one question I have that I don't have the answer to. I know that the Turtles and the Power Rangers crossed over in live action back in the Venus de Milo mm-hmm. days, and did that ever make it to the United States, or was that a Japan only thing? No, you mean Next Mutation? Well, yeah, yeah, the or, next, next or the um, okay, yeah. Next Mutation was here. Well, but, but and was, I believe the I would have to look it up. I would it would require me to do so much typing to figure this out. You know, off the, the top of my head. But I remember seeing the the Power Rangers Turtles crossover. I think it's in, I think it's in the In Space season. I'm I I could be wrong. I, like I I don't remember off yeah. the top of my head. So so yeah, I mean you know. At that time when that was happening, you know, we had just had the third Turtles movie and we had the Power Rangers starting up and they wanted to do a TV show for Turtles and say what you will about that TV show. Mm. Uh, it, I, I should watch there. that with adult eyes. I mean, that. Is, <laughs> I, I don't know the year of that, but that was definitely when it was not uh, 
cool for me at that time to to be into the. I was. It looks like it was nineteen eighty. 1998. So I was, yeah, high school, 19, yeah, 98. high school graduation. I was probably busy, but, um, but yeah, the, the, the weird thing though, I mean, mm-hmm. and maybe it's just from knowing that they crossed over back in the day, the power Rangers and the Ninja turtles, it seems like a very natural crossover. Yeah. I mean, we've had other things cross over with turtles. Like we've had, we've had turtles, ghostbusters. We've had turtles, Batman. We've had, uh, what turtles else? Power Rangers. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Turtles. Uh, uh, X Files. Uh, yeah. Um, golly, what other weird tra- Transformers in that one issue? Yeah. I, I, I man, I haven't read those since they came out, and I don't remember being moved by them. But yeah, they they've crossed over a lot, and yeah, I think that a lot of that has to do with the turtles just being genre bending things to begin with. Well, right, and plus, ever since, you know, Turtles Forever and everything needing to have mm-hmm. its own universe and needing to have its own prime dimension and and everything else, I mean, the Turtles can come up against any character. You know, we went through those two Ghostbuster, TMNT Ghostbuster trades, and I didn't, I disliked, so, you know, you got you people who are listening to this on from the command center, you can go over to the pullback and listen to those two. I'll probably have them linked in the show notes on the website, but... I didn't dislike the idea of the turtles crossing over with the Ghostbusters because, you know, Egon and Donnie kind of mix and, you know, Ray and Raph or whatever. Like, there are all kinds of, you know, character whatevers. It was mostly the biggest issue I had with Turtles Ghostbusters was the villains. I don't know. It just didn't didn't really work all that well. But with Power Rangers and Turtles, this was fun. Yep. To, To get this out of the way before I forget, it is written by Ryan Parrott. Illustrated by Simone DiMeo, with assistance by Alessio Zano on issues two to five. Colors by Walter Bayamonte, with assistance by Igor Monti. Editor, uh, editor. Letters are done by Ed Dukeshire. Covers by Dan Mora. So that's what uh, what's going on here. And yeah, this was just fun. I love the colors. I love the art. Mm-hmm. We start with the Power Rangers, and they're doing their Power Ranger thing. The banter in this does not feel like what I remember from the show, but it feels much more rich, much more natural, fun. That Yeah, that's the thing. That's like you haven't read the Power Rangers nope. comics from Boom, which is fine. It's not, you know... What they've done is they've taken the characters from the old series and told wholly unique stories with them mm-hmm. and given them – like there are plenty of lines from Billy that he says in this that I, I hear David's Yost, yep. David Yost's voice in my head saying, oh, that is something that the character would say. you know. And then there are other things where it's like, oh, the – this is the way this would be done. This is the way this would be done. And it's, it's interesting and it's fun and it's not, we're not in the nineties anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I don't mind nostalgic throwbacks, but you don't need to, you know, I'm, and I know this is more eighties than nineties, but it it bled through. I'm in the middle of rewatching the old 87 series. I, I've lost count how many times Michelangelo says, dude, not that it's a bad thing. (laughs) But you know what they I mean. Drive like, home those catchphrases. <laughs> yep. I mean, hey, you know that's what it was, and that's and that's absolutely fine. So is uh, just in case, uh, yeah, we are we're, we're on the pull bag show, right? Not the mm-hmm. yep. So we're on both. We're on yeah. both. Ooh, we are definitely yeah. crossing over. Is does yep. this follow or is it attached to the Boom Studios continuity? It. <sighs> I'm trying. Honestly, I'm trying to remember. I mean, it's probably like the Ninja Turtles, where it, it they might mention it in passing without saying anybody's name. But uh, also, uh, I guess the other question I had about this then is: this is the Boom Studio series its own canon, or is it a continuation or expansion of the TV show? So the Boom Studios thing is essentially its own canon, okay. but it takes homages to, like it gives you various things from the show thing. It, it, 
it does a multitude of things. Like if you ever, oh, what is it? Is it what's the one that Jesse always complains? We never got an answer about this. My buddy Jesse always complains that they never get. We never actually in the show. We never actually get a backstory from the Phantom about the Phantom Ranger. Uh-huh. Well, the comic X number of thirty something years later is now has given us a backstory origin story for the Phantom Ranger. So while they are wanting to tell wholly unique stories, they are telling them with the classic characters we know. Uh, the ones we just finished, volumes 11, 12, and 13, they did this cool thing where instead of just sending Zach, Jason, and Trini off to Switzerland like they did in the show because of the contract dispute for oh. the actors at the time. So that's what they did back then. So when Austin St. John, Thoi Trang, I, yeah, I believe I'm saying her name right. I'm probably not. And, and Walter Emanuel Jones, when they couldn't come to an agreement on whatever it was, I forget. Basically, whatever happened behind the scenes in the show, those characters, Jason, uh-huh. Jason Lee Scott, uh, uh, Zach Taylor, and, and Trini Kwan, they were sent to Switzerland to some world peace summit. Uh It was the easiest thing to say in the nineties. Oh, they're just away at the world because they had new red, yellow and black range, new actors Mm -hmm. come in. Well, in this, they make in, in the power Rangers comic, they make it work because they are now in the boom studios continuity. Those three characters instead of you like, yes, they do go to Switzerland, Mm -hmm. but they're going to Switzerland because they're still the yellow black and Red Rangers, except they are now called the Omega Rangers instead of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So it's this whole big universal thing that, like, I should have been prepping you for for the last two (laughs) weeks. (laughs) But, yes, essentially the Boom Studios canon is its own canon, Uh but it, it, it... it doesn't just say we're we're just going to take the character names and you're not going to know anything. No, it takes every it, it's just like the tur- just, just like the IDW tur- it, 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 it yep it's just, yep it's just like the turtles from IDW where it's a love letter to the franchise. Mm-hmm. The Boom Studio stuff is a love letter to the Power Rangers franchise. So in this trade, <laughs> Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um. Wow. There's a lot that happens here. Where should... I mean, I know we're going to start with issue one here, but, uh, you know, you have Mikey and Donnie and and they're fighting who they're fighting and the Power Rangers are fighting who they're fighting and, and I, you know... It's just, it's so good and so interesting. And I love how you get a, like, I don't want to, I want to say these are the 80s and 90s turtles. I don't want to sit here and say these are the IDW turtles because the IDW turtles don't have a giant purple D on the belt. Yep. Like this is specifically taking the original franchise cartoons and giving them a more modern design. I mean, it's exactly what, they did yeah. Power Rangers Boom Studios is they took the mm-hmm. the old property and just and, and didn't change it. They just modernized it. And yep. Yep. There there is something that happens later that when I saw it, I'm like, oh yep, this is these are the turtles from the old cartoon. Yep. Um, but again, they're done with they're, they've aged it up for us uh old people that read these comics. Yes. Yeah. And I just I love this, man. It's it looks so good. Yeah, it looks is so good. So good. No. I do not follow uh, Boom Studios as a publisher uh, mm-hmm. yet, but I, I really think I ought to, just because this is a really well done book. Yeah, there are plenty of Boom Studios things that I could point your way that you would actually really, really enjoy. Um, but yeah, I mean, this this I don't even know where to begin with this, and the reason why I don't know where to begin with this, folks, is because... 
Amazon Comic Oh, God. <laughs> so I am actually flipping through this on my phone because I the Comixology app is only on mobile. Whereas if I wanted to look at this on my computer, like I'm supposed to be looking at it on my computer, uh, the Amazon, the Kindle Comics app. Kindle was made for books, folks, not comics. So, mm-hmm. so I don't think we're going to go beat by beat with this because it would take us way too long. It, but- it, the wonderful thing about the book, though, is that it, it, it when it jumps back and forth and mm-hmm. when it goes from issue to issue, it does not let up. There, are, Every page is important. <laughs> every page is something. Yep. Um, but yeah, we're, we're bouncing back and forth between the issues and, and or between the two universes, I guess. They're, they seem separate yeah. until uh, K, uh, uh, Tommy is unmasked as a foot soldier in the Turtles. Mm-hmm. Like, Wait a minute, what? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then Raph takes notice of, uh, of him being a unique uh, individual, much tougher than their usual um, punching bags. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then yeah, in in the back in the Angel Grove universe, uh, the Power Rangers are lamenting the fact that Tommy has been gone missing for a long time, and he hasn't yeah. used his morpher, so they don't know where he is. They can't track him because he hasn't done that. Yep. And he eventually does do it, though. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And Tommy the Green Ranger versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Holy crap. Yeah. (laughs) That's been an interesting thing for me, too, is like, I don't know exactly what morphing does for you as a, as an individual, I think shredder does a good job of describing it later, but Mm. you know, could the turtles who are essentially maybe upper level human strength, could they take on a martial arts expert with the the power of this morphin alien technology, super strength, maybe, I don't know. Super speed. Yeah. The panel where he, you know, the, the green cloud is wearing off and it's him posing is that's just absolutely gorgeous. Yes. Yes, it is. Is this the, is, um, Perot Perot, the usual artist on the power ranger book. Uh, oh no, that's, he's the writer uh, illustrated. Uh, yeah, Simone yeah, right. yeah. Um, they've had multiple artists mm-hmm. do things. Um, in, you know, very, uh, of this, of the stuff. So, it, it is very much the Boom Studios style, yeah. so you know it isn't like it's out of character. And again, seeing somebody else take on you know the turtles and seeing it, we, we've seen so many turtle artists over the years that we've been doing the turtles books. I almost want to say they kind of took a toyetic aspect with the turtles in this because Raph looks a little brown. <laughs> yeah, that that's an interesting. I yeah. Look at that. I, I, there's the one of the other things about the coloring of this issue is the the work the light work um, uh-huh. is exquisite. I mean, everybody looks the right color, but they're standing in different colored lights, and that yep. is incredibly difficult to pull off. Having co- characters who are different colors all look by their lit like they're lit by the same light source. Um, that might be Simon DeMaio. Um, he, uh, he's yeah. Italian, so I don't know how to pronounce yeah. it. I apologize to everybody involved. Yes, we never pronounce things correct around here. I, well, it just means we need I, to interview these people and have them say their exactly. names for us. Exactly. This art is incredible. Yes, yes it is. But so, you know, we're getting our question answered as to what uh, how the Turtles would stand up against a legit super-powered individual, because it seems like a pretty balanced fight between four turtles and, and uh, Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing of it is, is that, so the Morphin grid is what gives the power Rangers their powers. It's what gives them their energy, their enhanced strength and, and whatever else and all of that. So the only real, like, uh, like in some series, not necessarily this, but in some series they have, certain special abilities, but 
in general, it's basically here, put this spandex on. You now have morphine energy running through you. You can punch people you couldn't normally punch before. Mm-hmm. So it isn't really like, what am I going to, what am I going to compare this to? Uh, it isn't like, it isn't like Superman getting a, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say red kryptonite, but whatever, kryptonite color that isn't green that kills him that actually gives him different powers this isn't like that mm-hmm. the when they morph yes they be they get super strength and they get the the traditional stuff but it's they're still martial artist fighters so them fighting in i mean and it looks much better having the turtles fight the rangers in the ranger suits versus having the turtles mm-hmm fighting a bunch of martial artists from Angel Grove <laughs> without the Power Rangers suits on. Like, why are these mutant turtles trying to beat up these kids? Yeah, what are they, what are these kids do? <laughs> We're just yeah. trying to drink our juice, man. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, and then the final panel of uh, page one, the turtles are mm-hmm. fighting the Power mm-hmm. Rangers and they're shouting their uh, catchphrase at each other. It's mm-hmm. just... Oh, and it's not the final panel. I was surprised. No. Yeah, no, it's not the final panel. Uh, yeah, so we get through this fight, and the 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 first chapter, the first issue, ends on Shredder, where That's he says, like, uh, "Oliver will bring me what I require, and the Power Rangers will be mine to command." Yeah, that's that's the, the, this shredder seems a lot like the IDW shredder to me, more so than yeah, the old he animated does. series. But that's what yeah. you do when you're Boom Studios and you get to modernize an old property like that. Um, yeah. Shredder is just he's as perfectly sinister and terrifying as he is in the IDW series. This is not the man you want to end up with any kind of superpower or mega nope. technology. Nope. So we get to the second chapter, second issue here. And the reason why I keep saying chapter is because in the, in the actual trade paperback, they do chapter one, two, three, four, and five. They don't just say issue. They Mm -hmm. say chapter. So, so yeah, we get, uh, New York city. They're, you know, they're all, you know, fighting with their weapons, you know, that, that opening panel with the, the banter with the weapons is hilarious. I love it. It's it, 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 yeah. it's exactly what you would expect from the characters, but given more uh, reality and more depth mm-hmm. uh, and, and more character. Uh, it does kind of make me wish I were reading the, the Boom Studios Power Rangers. I might have to go start finding some trades. Because uh, it's Absolutely. this. Yeah. OK. Yeah. The IDW series is what I would want from my Ninja Turtles as an adult. And I think the Boom mm-hmm. Studios is what I can get into for the Power Rangers as uh, as an adult. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it it's just so good. I don't, I don't want to spoil any of the Boom Power Rangers stuff for you, but uh, there are plenty of stories that, that are in there that first, I believe, what is it, the first... Yeah, the first 30 issues are just all amazing of that first boom mm-hmm. run. Yeah, and when I say, I, I hear people talk about the Turtles wanting them to be more mature. And I think when I hear that, I hear them saying more adult, more cursing mm-hmm. or violence or anything. And I don't need that from my no. modernized properties. I just want it to not treat me like an idiot. Yeah. And this comic does not do that. It is wonderfully mm-hmm. respectful of the original property while making it a, a, a wonderful tone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the tone is great. Every, you know, yeah, just because we say adult yeah. doesn't mean we need to hear some schizophrenic lady, shit, fuck, damn, fuck, shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, like, Raphael we, doesn't we, we need to need... curse. Leonardo doesn't need to take anybody's head off. I mean, if it's something that, if it is something that works at, like, if something happened to Raph in this and he's, you know, already gone under the sewer, but you have somebody, you know, walking 
on the street above the sewer grate and you hear this loud ass damn <laughs> well we know what that's referencing because hello you know it's fine if it's a reference and yes when we say adult we mean not just 90s for kids kitsch k-i-t-s-h yeah, yeah. It, and yeah. this whole series and in, in the five issues that i've that I've read of these Power Rangers and the, with the crossover, I like this is a book that my kid could read as well. Like I, mm-hmm. it's so yeah, it's not adult like that. It's adult like I don't feel insulted, and it's still appropriate yeah. enough for my kid. Yep, exactly. So we get this whole thing between Karai and and uh, and all that, and <laughs> we get to one of the best homage shots in the book and this is just silly though but for me uh where we end with uh you've done well tyler the oh no that's what it is um i'm sorry it's not it's not karai it's um tommy and his buddy tyler i i've been reading the boom studios thing for a while and this came right before they switched into the new current series so yeah i don't know I'm, anything about tyler yeah but i put it together I, who he was in this book like okay they yeah. knew each other and yep yeah so right as that panel ends we get you know bright shiny new york with a giant channel six building i'm like oh that works <laughs> at least at least a at least a at least it's channel six and not channel three yeah. or <laughs> channel five or whatever well that this is another thing that i didn't connect the time does cement it in the animated universe mm-hmm. mentioning irma at channel six with vernon yep yeah absolutely uh the the and... april and kimberly being friends angle is not something that i would have considered or thought of if i were asked to write this but it's a really good angle I think it works well because I think that they can uh, compare notes Mm -hmm. and the general notes that they will probably be comparing is, you know, Oh, those guys, they're just a bunch of guys. Like, you know, I, I'm currently watching through the 87 series, like I said, and I'm up to like season five, like I'm on the second Leatherhead episode. It's the one where it's Leatherhead meets the Rat King. So it's the one with Leatherhead and the Rat mm-hmm. King in it. And I've watched enough of the 87 series now, even though I didn't really remember it much from being, from being a kid back then, where I can say this April and that April are pretty much the same April because I hear uh, – Renee Jacobs' Jacobs, yeah. voice in my head. I almost said Judith Hogue, Hogue but it's not. That's the movie. But you know, I, I can hear Renee Jacobs in my head when she's, and I can hear uh, Amy Jo Johnson as Kimberly. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, it works very, very well. And and that's the cool thing about this this uh, crossover is that almost everybody has somebody like Donnie and Billy are talking, and you know. <laughs> Zach and Mike are, are paired off. Tommy and Jason. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, wait. Tommy and Raph. Yeah. Because they like to fight. A little crankier. Yep. Yep. I think Leo's really the only bu- person who doesn't get anybody. Yeah. I suppose he and he and Jason can relate to leading and how difficult that is. Oh, they do. They uh, that's right. No, later they, they yep. um start swapping uh swordsmanship. Uh, tips. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 There's a panel here coming up where, where Jason says she studied whatever it is. And Leonardo goes, which is why with your sword, you should be using a bl- Jigen Ryo attack mm-hmm. attack. Yeah. So, so yeah, they have that, that pairing kind of, you know, to, to look forward to and, and yeah, I, I'm just I'm loving this because I think it's so fun. And like you said, the art is simply amazing. So good. <laughs> so good. And then, <laughs> as this fight kind of concludes here, we go to the the Moon Palace and oh God. 
I can, I can, I can hear that voice. I mean, it's that, uh, this was another thing for me too. And, and, uh, you know, being just uh, passingly familiar with the power Rangers, hearing Rita's dialogue, reading Rita's dialogue coming out in that voice. Yeah. Um, it's not just the ha, 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 villainous that she is from the yeah. show, but she's just as scary as Shredder. And mm-hmm. uh, the the fact that they can make such a, a wacky character, uh, this bizarre, laughing, humorous character from the old show, so vile and sinister again. Like, I'm, I respect what they did here in this book, and I would expect to find it in the rest of the Boom Studios stuff as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. You know, I need to get you into the Moon Studios yeah. stuff, the where it started, because I, like I said, I don't want to give too much away for you because I don't want you to be spoiled on it. It's, um, it's, <sighs> it's a very unique take, and it's very refreshing, and it's it's very interesting. And well, I I I, th- I think I might know where you're going, and and I don't. I'm going to take a guess that this there is something. By some of her references, I can kind of tell that she has a similar origin to what happened in that newer movie they did, the like the weird reboot, where Maybe. Rita used to be the old Green Ranger, and kind of, kind of, sort of, but not really. Okay, uh, I, I won't probe I, I would have to. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> um, so yeah, what I do love is at the end of the the Moon Palace panel, as you see Rita's face after. You know, you know, she tells, you know, them to follow her. We see, before we go to the next panel, we see, well, look at what we got here. <laughs> we got us some trespassers, Bebop. Mighty rude of them, ain't it? Oh, my God. Bebop and Rock oh, yeah. City and the Power Rangers <laughs> world. Just, oh, my God. It's like I wasn't surprised <laughs> to see them there. Like, they totally fit. <laughs> yeah, they totally fit. And it's awesome and fun. And, and it, it it's just – it's so – again, it's a mixture of everything. But with them specifically, with how they look – and how like I can hear I can hear oh totally Kim and 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 Barry in my head I'm like sure. this is cartoon yeah yeah this is cartoon Bebop and Rock City and I love it I think it's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> these guys are even uglier than we are I can hear that yep. I mean like I know yep. I know these yeah. voices so much uh, yep. <laughs> And then I yep. think uh, it's it's it wouldn't be a spoiler for our listeners because they made a toy. But uh, I don't care what you possess, uh, the Dragon Power Coin. Return it to me. Oh yeah, sure he can. And <laughs> Shredder whips out the Morpher yep. and uh, mm-hmm. gives us a, a green Shredder Ranger, which is yeah. it works so much better than it should. Yeah, it it really really does, and. I had known, obviously, that they were going to be doing the toys. I think we all did, obviously, if you had read the comics or not. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's it's Turtles, it's Rangers, it's whatever. The design looks much better in comic form. Uh, they do, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the toy is great, and this is how we end uh, chapter the, the second chapter here. The I, you know. I, I have the Turtle toys. Uh, I bought mm-hmm. uh, all five of them, or they released them in two packs. The quality of those toys is top notch, and I think it's the same yeah. studio who makes the, I don't know, the Marvel Legends scale Power Rangers. They're great figures. They're absolutely wonderful. Um, and uh, I thought I should have had the Shredder one by now, but uh, my big bad toy store order is says September. Like, oh man, I'm mm. wait that long for the Shredder. <laughs> I need all of them. Yep. Um, they, they they don't look like the comics, but uh, but they're they're good figures. They're okay figures. Yeah, they don't look yeah, as absolutely. good as they do in the comic though. The comic is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, again, the colors and and everything, and I love the way the story progresses because you have you have the Power Rangers fighting their own villain to start, and then the turtles come in, and then they have you know the whole good guys fight the good guys fight. And then they both realize that they're both good guys. And then you go to the bad guys and 
you know, you have the, the, the capturing of the good guys by the bad guys, and then the bad guys are going to introduce everybody to everybody, and and we get a Shredder Green Ranger. And, and I, I also, as, uh, as an outsider coming into this, love to see Shredder and Rita going to toe, going toe to toe. Um, mm-hmm. She was always a passive villain. I don't remember her ever really getting her hands dirty, but here, you know, we've got lightning vortexes of energy mm-hmm. and she's just throwing him around and he's throwing her around. I, yeah. I like to see her as this kind of villain. Yeah. I mean, in the show, in the original Power Rangers, the three seasons, Rita was always, you know, I'm going to throw my wand down at the ground and make my monster grow. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, sh- I think the, <laughs> I I hate this term. I really hate it. But hot take, folks. I really think the evilest thing she did was trick Zed into marrying her on the show. <laughs> I really think that was the most evil thing she did. But <laughs> but Rita in in this series, man, holy crap, she's scary. The Ed, which makes sense that Shredder, yes, who is also creepy and terrifying to me and those horrible mm-hmm. things like, Oh man, these two. And it doesn't, you know, in the, in the turtle series, it doesn't go the way that it went with Krang and the shredder Krang and the shredder met in the turtle series. And we're like, Nope, this isn't going to work out. We're both too power hungry. I'm out of here. Yep. And, but these two are just demented enough to fight and want to see who <laughs> ends up losing. Yep. And she just assumes that the Shredder is some fool, because we start the third chapter here in the Technodrome. You fool, you've corrupted the dragon power coin. I merely bent it to my will as I do all things. Which is such a Shredder line. I love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Anybody who's only ever known the Shredder from the cartoon hears, like, yeah, that's totally Shredder. And they're like, what are you talking about? He's a Kmart villain. Like, no, no, read the IDW series. It's uh, Yes, yes. Yes, read the IDW yeah. series. <laughs> and I will say, and I don't know what was going on, but, again, I'm going to reference the fact that I've been watching through the series. Mm-hmm. There are a number of episodes where it is not James Avery as the voice of the Shredder. Really? There are a good number of them where the voice acting is completely off. However, I did find out that when it isn't James Avery, it's usually Dorian Harewood who does the voice of the Shredder in the animated series. Huh. Now, I'm I'm not saying that James Avery isn't there. He is, but he is not the voice of the Shredder in every single episode. Why are you typing on my podcast? I'm sorry. I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking up who Dorian is because I've never heard of him before. Oh, he's done. You, you, you know him. You know who Dorian Harewood is. He's done plenty of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Totally. All right. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no. So, but yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, I, I read those lines. You know, I bent it to my will. I hear. Either James Avery or the original movie Shredder. Original from movie Shredder for me, totally. Yep, yep. absolutely. Oh, that line. Oh, his whole speech yeah. in the ch- I, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, so we get to, to more of this battle here, and we see Rita and Shredder going after the turtles and we see them. What the heck are they doing here? So yeah, so we get that with Bebop and Rocksteady and all that. And then we get back to Tyler versus Tommy and their debate over who abandoned who and why Tommy can't reach him. Tommy's captured at this point. um, Of course, because Shredder has his morpher. I was, uh, I was entertained by, the turtles and power rangers hanging out in the turtle lair and mm-hmm. uh convincing zach uh michelangelo is convincing zach to try all of these crazy pizza toppings all of these animated series yep. pizza toppings and this i mean i i've i guess i watched the series but this makes me want to get to know this zach the boom studio mm-hmm. zach he seems like an interesting 
yeah, funny he is. character, more funny than he was in the show, I think, even. Yeah, I mean, he's he, he is a very good, interesting character, and his story leads to a whole bunch of other things as well. And yeah, I mean, I'm just I I'm just loving this and we got to comment on it every single time, folks. Anytime that we do for you those of you who are listening to this on the Power Rangers podcast episode uh feed every time we see Splinter, we got to comment on it. And- you know, I didn't I didn't <laughs> look this time. I didn't like really study. It's uh So it's you know. yeah. It's not bad. It, it's not dog-like. It's not grotesque rat-like. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very – out of all of the turtle designs, it is very modern version uh, 87. Yep. It's uh, for, 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 the, for those of you listening from the Power Rangers podcast side, uh, it is very difficult to draw a, a, a rat and make it look not like a mouse. And so the designs for Splinter wind up looking a lot like a dog with pointy ears. Um, because if you give him round ears, it just doesn't quite look right. And so we all, yeah, that's, that's, we should rate all of our uh, Splinter, <laughs> like put them in order from most rat to least rat and from best looking to worst looking. Um, uh, it's a very difficult thing to do. And I've tried to draw it and it just, <laughs> it's a very hard. Mm-hmm. And we get uh, we get the um, so we get that, and then we go to the command center where Zordon is telling them about uh, what does he say? He says we can't get a precise lock on Tommy's location, but we'll teleport you as close as we can. So we have Jason and Zach, we have Leo, and then we have the morph. <laughs> Do they always make a big deal about it in? I mean, is it, does it get like a panel or a page in the Boom Studios comics whenever they do this? Oh, the morph? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It just looks cool. I mean, cool. it's a full, yeah, it's always a, like, at the very beginning of this, you saw it mm-hmm. when they morphed. So that was kind of a smaller morph panel. This morph panel is very, very big. And, yes, it always does get a really, really nice big pop off on on. On each on the page that it happens on. Gosh, that's so cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool, very cool. And the one person out of all of this that I was <laughs> not expecting to show up shows up. Casey? Yeah. Really? That surprised me. <laughs> At this point I forget I'm forgetting who exists and like when, yeah. oh, what Casey? <laughs> yeah, like, Casey, what are you doing here? And if this were like the happy days or something, the audience would be applauding <laughs> as he yep. like comes oh, up. Yeah. And then he'd have to stand around and wait for the audience to die down before he delivers his line. Remember me? <laughs> yep. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's hilarious and it and it adds a whole new layer to the thing and it's just this comic is very fun. It's, uh, it, yeah, you're right. He shows up and then it's another character for the Power Rangers to relate to, to react with. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, this comic is about relationships. Like, yeah. every, and it more so even than the Ghostbusters one, the, the, the relationship thing that was happening in the Ghostbusters was just incidental and fun and mm-hmm. clever and neat. But this is how do these characters all interact? It's like a study. Yeah. It's a case study in how these two universes would interact. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, we get Casey and, and all that and more battle and more fight and more everything and send down your monster. And, and as we come closer to the close of this and, Oh, it just, <laughs> I may have a rather radical suggestion. <laughs> so we get to pick our own colors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have the Power Rangers crossed, have they done any other crossovers? Uh, ooh. Hmm. Because like this just begs the question of like who who do we want to see with the ranger color like what who yeah. do we get oh, who else can we give the powers to because yeah that that's a that's a panel that says oh no i've got to read that next uh mm-hmm. i've got to read the next one 
Yeah, I'm not not too sure on that one. Uh, I don't really think that Power movies. Rangers Ghostbusters would work as well. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. I no. Power Rangers Turtles great, yep. you know. They do have oh what is it? Now? It's not it's not Power Rangers Godzilla, is it or is it uh is it Godzilla Tur There's oh, yeah. some new thing out that. now. Yeah, there's some new thing out now about Godzilla crossing over with well, I think it's I don't remember. But anyway. Yeah, I saw it on the yeah. shelf today, but that's okay. I'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> I got to know now. Yeah, I'm just trying to f- see if I can find an article that lists uh, I mean, you know, you put in Power Rangers crossovers into Google, it's going to pull up all the all of the, the yeah, uh, the, yeah, the television show the, ones. The television show episode. And uh, but no, this um Oh, there was a Justice League Power Rangers one back in 2017. Oh. Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm. Cool. It is. It's Godzilla Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic crossover. That That's work. what it is. Yep. Godzilla and the Power Rangers have to cooperate to beat one of Rita's monsters. Yep. There you go. I I'm not like I, I've said before on the on the pull bag, and I've said it other places. The closest thing I get to Godzilla ever, and it's not that I dislike it. I just I've never had, you know. Just never had any interest in it. But the closest thing I come to is Austin Powers and Gold Member. Look, it's Godzilla. Due to international copyright laws, it's not. But it is. We should still <laughs> run. It's that whole. Yeah. So. But yeah, no. Power Rangers, Godzilla, Godzilla, Power Rangers. And chapter three here ends on what I just said a moment ago with Mikey asking if they get to pick their own colors. Like I said so far, folks, I mean, this book is just so damn fun. And, yeah. So. And then, and then the opportunity to purchase Ninja Turtle Power Ranger action figures was it just, it, it was, it was insane. I can't believe that that was something I could do. Uh, they, they look great right next to my Star Trek Ninja Turtles. Yep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So since the power, well, I, the power Rangers have been depowered, issue four mm-hmm. or chapter yep. four in the trade starts uh, with the Rita's monster in New York. The turtles have to step up and defend it, but I don't think they foresaw the fact that they're turtle rangers now and they get their own morph page. Yes, they get their own morph page, but uh, I don't think Raph really understood what it meant choosing his color. Because uh, <laughs> red in the Power Rangers universe, unless it, unless it's Tommy as green or white, but red is usually the leader. So having Raph kind of step into a leader role, sort of, because he's the Red Ranger... <laughs> yeah, you, and I noticed that in the dialogue that there is this yep. weird kind of confusion among the turtles in in this part. Mm-hmm. I mean, like the Morphin page puts Leo as Blue Ranger in the center, um, and and it does make sense as to the colors that they're getting. Like maybe April should have been the Yellow Ranger, but that would have meant Mike would be pink, and mm-hmm. you know, okay, uh, maybe, but no, uh, Don is the Black Ranger. April steps in as the pink ranger, which is way cool that she was brought in. And, and I, I do kind of advocate turtle uh, or April being kind of a fifth turtle in that way. I don't like, I don't like seeing damsels in distress. I no, just be a, you're a part of the team. Let's, let's go like princess yep. Allura. Let's step up and kick some butt. Uh, yeah. Leo's blue ranger. Um, and Raph, yes, is red ranger, but they do, they do make some talk about that. I think, Yep. Yeah. It, oh man. And the other thing from this issue that I did not expect to see. So like, okay. So the power Rangers are depowered. The, the turtles have the morphers and they're the, they're the superheroes. Now, what do you do with the depowered power Rangers? Uh, mm-hmm. Splinter gives them this beautiful, inspiring speech about 
being just as important and you're still Rangers because the powers chose you. You don't need the powers, your Mm -hmm. adaptability, camaraderie, trust, focus, be silent in the night and Mm -hmm. be ninjas. And they get, they, they don't get Ninja Turtle costumes, but they, they step up as ninjas. And I think that is way cool. Now, this is also another homage, though. Mm-hmm. Even though I think, you know, you're right. You are absolutely correct in, you know, saying that Splinter's speech is inspiring. And, you know, it for it, you know, because they are martial artists, mm-hmm. they can also be ninjas. This also goes back to the movie because they get the ninja zords and they get all the stuff and they get the cool ninja suits. And Adam just has to be a frog, I guess. <laughs> That's a reference this Captain America does not understand. <laughs> You've seen the 95 Power Rangers yeah, movie, right? I don't remember that part. And I saw it okay, recently so, too. So when they do the morph sequence, mm-hmm. when they get when they when they go to um Phaedos or what, whatever the planet is that they go to get the new power. And Dulcia goes through and says, you know, Kimberly the Crane, Aisha the Bear, Billy the Wolf. And you you pan over to Johnny Young Bosch, and in this deadpan sound, he says, you know, she looks at him and says, Adam, what's wrong? I'm a frog. <laughs> and the and the Dulcia character says, Yes, like, you know, a frog that becomes a handsome prince once you give him a kiss. You know, kind of thing. And she kisses him on the forehead and he feels better about himself. And then you pan over to Tommy, who is like, you know. And Tommy, you are the winged lord of the skies, the f- ninja falcon zord. And I'm like, yep, that that's on brand. That works. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Adam was never thrilled that he was the frog. <laughs> but then he realized, oh, hey, being a frog is kind of cool. It ain't easy being green. Oh. <laughs> So, yeah, so we get to, you know, they go through the whole morph sequence and we get to the, like you said, where where the rangers can still help with being ninjas. And we get this whole battle sequence and just. (laughs) I love Jason. You're right, creepy Dr. Villain. This will hurt quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, that, the 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 Caucasian Baxter Stockman is what cemented mm-hmm. it for me as oh animated. Yep, because it's the only time he's been white. Yep, absolutely. And sometimes, like I, I wish by issue four, chapter four, this whole Tyler and Tommy thing. I wish they would have switched either Tommy's uniform or Tyler's uniform because while I love purple, I purple is one of my favorite colors. I will, you know, die on that, that hill. There's just a little too much purple sometimes when you're seeing Tommy and Tyler fight in this, in this issue. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there, we only see like a panel or two of them, but, um, if it were important for me to know which one was which, they would tell me. And so <laughs> yeah, when I, exactly. I was reading that and and uh, a panel coming up, a panel or two coming up, uh, I just let it go. <laughs> I like, yeah. I, I, it'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. For a minute there, I kind of had uh, Justice Lord's Batman vibes where there, there's a scene in the um, Justice League two-parter hereafter where uh, Lord uh, our universe, Kevin Conroy, Batman, and the Justice Lord's universe, Kevin Conroy, Batman. It, you know, you, the, it, in the shot, they only ever show you either our Batman or the Justice Lord's Batman, but it, it makes it sound like he's having a conversation with himself. <laughs> and it's just, it's so freaky, weird, and awesome. We get the power, we get the Turtle Ranger's power blaster formation panels here. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, this is very awesome. The uh, accessories in the Ninja Turtles um, figures, it doesn't tell you anywhere in the manual or the back of the package that the weapons connect, but the weapons connect, and they hook together to make the turtle blaster. You have to figure it out because it's it's not easy. 
<laughs> but it's cool. Yeah, I I wouldn't expect them to make it easy for us. <laughs> Yeah, not at all. So, but yeah, I mean, again, all you know, as I was reading this, as I was preparing for the show, and even with us going through this, all as I see is fun mm-hmm. because this was just so fun and so interesting, and we've had so many and dark things can happen. I don't, you know, I'm not gullible. Dark, evil, you know, things can happen in in movies, cartoons, comics, whatever. But there's just a lightheartedness to this when you're having the rangers and the turtles interact with each other that is just kind of really refreshing. I kind of need, I think I need to reorient how I think about comics because when I, I buy everything Ninja Turtles because I always regret not doing that. And so I bought (laughs) this and I read this uh, and I don't remember being excited by it or turned on by it. Uh, I, I half read it, but I'm always thankful for the second read through that I have to do before we podcast about Mm -hmm. it because I appreciate it more i'm paying more attention when i'm looking at it with a critical eye and and i think this needs to be the way that i read all of my comics well i mean the way i see it is for you specifically and this is just my personal opinion you know whatever it is it is what it is but you're a guy who buys comics because you want to number one collect them but you also number one want to read them and and read the story for yourself Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I'm the one over here saying, hey, Joe, let's podcast about this because I only podcast – I only read comics for podcasting. Mm -hmm. Like I've had this trade in my Comixology or Amazon or whatever the hell it's called now. I've had it in there for a good number of years. Whenever it got released originally, I've had it since then. Mm -hmm. So like I've been waiting for a few years like because my thing is – if I had read this before we were ever going to do an episode and then we weren't going to do it until let's say six months from now, six months from now, me would be saying to you throughout this episode. Yep. I remember reading that. Yep. I remember reading that. Oh, this is where this happens. This is where like I would have. So for me, I have to do that immediate Mm -hmm. like fresh take. Like if I've read a number one and I want to do an episode on, on that issues, number one, I have to read it. I have to go grab somebody, whomever it is, and say, hey, what time can you podcast? And how how I normally do it is when I'm reading to get the story is I will read it to get the story. On my second read through, I will – I will – the hell am I trying to say here? I will pay attention to more of the details. Yeah. I will pay attention to more of the art. Like we've said throughout this last hour or so, you know, this art is amazing and this art is great and the story is wonderfully written and whatever else. But my second view of this was, okay, I know what the story is. I know what happens. I need to focus on those, those morphins, you know, um, the, uh, the morph sequences mm-hmm. and, and the morph splash pages and, and how it's all brought together kind of a thing. So that's why I end up reading it multiple times, either before, during, or after a podcast, is because I want to make sure I have more than enough, you know, to go around to say, hey, mm-hmm. you know, I enjoyed reading this the four times that I read it, or what you know what I mean, whatever it is. Like, I'm not just reading, like, I will never... If there is a comic I have read that I do not like, I will just set it aside. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I feel like I kind of wasted my time on that, but I'm not going to sit here and make somebody else waste their time (laughs) and then then waste both of our times trying to record a podcast on something. I don't have time or any energy left Mm -hmm. for negative negative review style things. There are plenty of other people on the internet that can do a negative comic review. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's why my pull list is so small because I'm, I, there's just so much that I'm like, Oh man, I can't, I don't have the, I can't carry that burden. Yeah. Um, but you know, my pull list is so light. It would not cost me much to pick up uh, power Rangers in trade a couple of times. 
Yeah, no, I mean the 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 trades are out. I'm sure I can I can find you the you know the ones you need to read, the ones you want to read. So sure. You know, you know, hey, that's completely up to you. And and because I've started you in so late on this, you already have, a, well, the first original Boom Studios comic series for Power Rangers only ran for, I think, 55 or 57 issues. So, I mean, it isn't like, <laughs> it's not like, oh, it's Batman number four seventy five or whatever. Oh, no. Like, like you know, it's like eighty years, ninety years of Batman, really. So, but yeah, as we get through chapter four, issue four here, man, this battle, wow, it doesn't stop. Nope, I do, and I I love how this uh, issue ended again. Uh, mm-hmm. so we have the Power Rangers dealing with. I'm sorry, the Power Ninja Turtles, the Turtle the Rangers, Turtle Rangers. There you um, go. the Rita villain, and then in Central Park, Bebop and Rocksteady get the Rita treatment, and they're the big kaiju, Bebop and Rocksteady. This is like <laughs> a step number thirteen of things that I do uh-huh. not know or call happening, and it totally should have happened. This needs yes. to happen. It's so good. It is, is, yeah. You know what? Look, you say what you want about the sidekick villain characters, where some of them aren't that great, some of them are amazing, and whatever. Bebop and Rocksteady, both in the '87 series, and this is obvious. Their interpretations here in this this crossover are based on that more so on the bop and rock and music culture of IDW Bebop and Rock City, but both of those versions are absolutely amazing. Yep. It, which is another, it's an amazing thing since Eastman and Laird did not like those characters that they made up for the TV show. It was yeah. absolutely not their favorites, but they've been done and redone with, again, yes, the love and care of somebody who respects the property that yep. they've been made into amazing things and they are fun and amazing in this book as well. Yes, absolutely. So we kick off issue five with more of the battle in New York city in central park. Because the turtles showed up in the Megazord. Yep. It's hard to make the Megazord look cool because in that old show, it was a dude in a big, <laughs> cardboard suit, but the artist uh, made this actually look pretty amazing. This is neat. I mean, it's very geometric, like the cardboard mm-hmm. Megazord was. I don't know. I don't know how you draw this. I I don't even know how you draw it without some kind of really good looking model to manipulate in front of you. And we, we, have they ever made a good model of that thing? Probably not, because it always has to do something or fit a human inside of it. But this looks cool. Yeah. This is a, a Voltroni looking legs. It's so cool. Yeah. And that's the other thing, like, you know, what, what, like you said at the beginning of this, and like you just said now, uh, and that was my thing in, in oh God, oh, man. uh, in, in the nineties was when I, when I first saw this, I was like, Hmm. Okay, when I first saw that Megazord sequence, I was like, this has every feeling of Voltron to it. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I don't dislike it. It's not a bad thing. I don't know if there is an actual... I... What is that? Uh... Ascension Project Dino Megasword, $170 from GameStop. I don't know. I, I'm sure there are some sort of something out there that has, you know, the Megazord be just like a statue or something. I'm sure there, there are plenty. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, this thing that I'm looking at, uh, it's from Hasbro. It's the Ascension Project Dino Megazord action figure. Like I said, it's $165.99 on GameStop. But um, if you want just just to leave it, at, like oh. you want to get it, combine it, and just leave it as the Megazord, it looks pretty damn accurate to the show to me. I am confident 
that that is the toy that they used for the model of the drawing. Looking at on um, the saber tooth leg where the wheel is, and then yep. my favorite panel, the kaboom, 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 with that <laughs> huge foreshortened view from the yellow foot all the way up to the head. That is, yep. oh, that's so hard to draw. I know yeah. foreshortening those weird geometric forms like that, that extremely, it's so hard. It's so well drawn. Yeah. Yeah, the art in this is amazing. So, but but yeah, um, let's see here. The, uh, several times throughout the this this issue, the, the, this series, Donatello has called out some of the funny Power Ranger things. Like, so are their clothes underneath their spandex now? Or yeah. uh, w- well, the one thing that I did not see called out that I expected to be called out was Shredder playing the flute through the helmet with a faceplate. <laughs> yeah. It's... We're not going to ask. We're not going to. Yep. Nope, we can't, but I'm surprised Donatello I... didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised Donatello didn't either. either. But, you know, yeah, that would have been a good joke yeah. to make. I mean, they have made that joke in the past, though, <laughs> I mean, because it, you know, seriously, like, you really can't blow. You can blow on that flute, but <laughs> you're not. You know, you're basically just putting it up to your mouth and pressing the buttons, and the buttons is, is what makes the sound. Oh, I got it. I guess. I guess. I don't know. That's my new head cannon. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> I I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm no hell. It totally makes even sense. <laughs> Even 13-year-old me always saw Tommy or whomever was in that suit, in the Green Ranger suit in the show, when he would just, you know, he would hold it up and he would start playing the buttons. And I'm like, oh, okay. So he's not actually playing that instrument with his breath and his vocals and actually playing the instrument. He's just playing the instrument with his fingers because oh, – That's just pressing how the, the toy works. You know. That was exactly how the toy worked. <laughs> the toy See? Together. So, yeah. Head cannon. You know, Thanks. I don't know. I guess. I, you know, I don't know these things. I don't like – That's just the comfortable just, way to hold it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Another oh. delightful thing that I noticed uh, as the um, – Megazord falls down is how the turtle's uh, pupilless eyes show up through the helmets, which you don't usually yep. see when it's just the regular human Power Rangers under there. Uh, yeah. But that is neat, and it makes me want to go over into the other room and look at the Power Ranger, the, the turtle toys, to see if they mm-hmm. have eyes on those figures as well. But uh, that can wait until after we're done recording. You all can look it up <laughs> online, listeners, and find out. But. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I. <sighs> I have only, I mean, okay, yes, I, I said I read this four times before we started doing this, but really the, that four times was to get, like I said already, every aspect of of the thing. But now that I'm thumbing through this, I'm like, and there's a panel here close to the close to the end of, of, of the battle where we have Shredder morphing with Dragon Sword. And it goes through, and you know we see him, and uh, oh no, it's it's Tommy morphing uh, into Dragon Sword, and he's like, "It's over, Shredder." And we get this panel of Shredder where he says, "I will die before surrendering to you." There is so much purple, and and I'm not I'm not complaining here. There is so much purple, and there is so much gray gun metal for the helmet and whatever on Shredder. I'm like, hey, movie Shredder did make appearance in the comic. <laughs> oh yeah, there we are. Yeah, the depowered that. Yep, yep, the depowered yep. Shredder. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Of course, Rita's going to double cross him like like Rita does. And... You're going to take me to those other people in your other dimension, mm-hmm. and like sequel. <laughs> oh yeah, like I'm surprised it hasn't happened already. Honestly, well, we're, we're going to review this, and people are going to listen to the review, and they're going to go buy the trade, and then yep. it'll say, "Oh wow, there was enough interest. Let's make that." And look, I. 
I don't mind having some choco puffs on my pizza. I I don't even mind the idea of at the this is at the very tail end of one of the first ten episodes where I think it's actually one of the first five where April's like, give me a slice of the bananas and sausage, will ya? I don't even mind that, but I'm sorry, Michelangelo and Zach. Grasshoppers, bananas, and coleslaw. Mm. Uh, no, I, 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 I veto that one. <laughs> and we have a nice little moment between Kim and April. We get moments here at the end with with everybody, yeah, and I think that's really, really awesome and fun. Because I think a, a normal comic would have ended it by now, but we get to mm-hmm. see the afterglow and the conversation yeah. of them sharing and still more relationship building. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, I just I think we could we could have a shared universe here. The Power Rangers can exist in the Ninja Turtles universe. Let's do it. I mean, if Venus can exist, so can the Power Rangers. <laughs> I am confident. Um, so, uh, you know what? Let's let's hold off on spoilers, but I'm I think yeah. I think it's going to be all right. I think we're Venus yeah. will be uh, redeemed. Yeah. Now. Yes. A- after 24 years, she finally gets into the comics. <laughs> I, I, I tweeted oh, at uh, I tweeted at Sophie and got a reply, mm-hmm. and I'm just ecstatic. So <laughs> you should, yeah, you should save that. So yeah, at the end of this, um, the, uh, you know, like you said, everybody's doing relationship building and the very final panel is Raph versus Tommy. Let's figure out, you know, who the, who the better fighter is. And that is so cool. Yeah. And oh gosh, I, uh, t- t- uh Jason, David Frank, is that his name? Mm-hmm. The green ranger? Yep. For, yep. I, I, again, I don't pay attention, but you can't help but see how excited he is to be there for the fans and how excited he is about the character and the sincere love and how much he's willing to share with everybody. And I see that energy coming out in this version of Tommy as well. The the Tommy who wouldn't be afraid to let somebody fight him as as the green ranger who's who's like this is my life man we got to see uh Raphael yeah. would do that and Tommy would help him out <laughs> yeah no absolutely yeah and that's the thing like he is if you look at the power rangers and you look at the actors and they've gone on and done other things but i mean power rangers <sighs> You look at Jason David Frank, and yes, he's been in other things. Yes, he's done other things, but he is there. There is. It's one of those things where you can have an actor that can like a lot of voice actors. Take Maurice Lamarche for example. Mm-hmm. Maurice Lamarche can voice from Inspector Gadget all the way up to whatever the brain from from Animaniacs or you know whatever. Uh, you know, grumpy in in the 7D. Like, Maurice has a wide range, and we know him as multiple things. And then there are people, just in general, who are in acting, who you know them for one thing. Like, just you know them for one thing. And that's the one thing you love that they do, because that's who they are. Mm-hmm. And with Jason David Frank... I personally believe, obviously, he has embraced that with his Ranger past mm-hmm. and everything else, and he loves to. That's why he's doing his whole film thing, uh, Legend of the White Dragon. It's this, you know, Kickstarter thing that they did a couple of year, you know, a couple of years ago, and they got the funding finally, and they're going to be doing this whole unique version of Power. It's not. He can't actually say it's Power Rangers, and it's not actually the characters mm-hmm. of Power Rangers, but it's in that style kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a whole arc that you'll you'll end up reading in the the first uh, thirty or so issues of the Power Rangers comic, where it's from issue twenty fifth, uh, yeah, twenty five to thirty is Shattered Grid. Ooh. And they did a Shattered Grid trailer and they did a Shattered Grid short film to just kind of tease the whole thing, uh, to, to, you know, tease the whole event and everything else. And he came back and he got in the suit and because that the Shattered Grid storyline basically is and this isn't spoiler. It's kind of a spoiler for you, but 
it's an evil Tommy from a different universe mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like what would have happened if he took a different path kind of thing, but it's, it's so fun. It's so well done. The same thing here with, with power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, Ninja Turtles, power Rangers. I absolutely love the story. I think it is so fun. Uh, at the back of the trade, we also have a cover gallery, which is basically just all the various Power Rangers helmets with the various, like, like each of the turtles holding each of the colored helmets. So we had various. Good lord, there are a lot of covers for there this. There are a lot of had, covers that was very yeah. difficult for me buying a single. Yeah, I was like, wait, which? Yeah, because they're not numbered on the front, and yeah, you. I mean, I think you have to go. I don't even think it's numbered on the back. I numbered my uh, the boards in in the yeah, so that I could actually tell what issues were which. Yeah, yeah, I do love though that we get all of the turtles holding like you know you the the red, the pink, the yellow the blue, the black, the green, and then you get Shredder holding the red or the, um, the pink, the yellow, the blue, the pink, the black, and then Shredder holds the green, red, white, and then he also holds what is Dra- what is Draken's cover or helmet as well. No, this is fun. This is so good. In the trade, we also get character gallery designs from from the artist, and it's just – it's so good. It's so fun. Everybody should check this out. Mm-hmm. It's just an enjoyable, enjoyable thing. Yeah. I'm going to buy it in trade and make my kids read it. <laughs> Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a crossover between Boom Studios and IDW Publishing. Pizza time! Like science fiction? Of course you do, or you wouldn't be listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Well, the Mark Who 42 Universe podcast is an award winning sci fi radio show that's been around for over 10 years. We cover everything from Doctor Who to the MCU, to pop culture, and everything in between. A new show drops on Tuesday mornings on the GCRN website and all of the major podcast platforms. So listen to the Marku 42's Universe podcast from the universe and beyond. What was that universal greeting again? Never mind, I remember. Ba weep grana, weep ninny bong. Hey guys, it's Rodimus Primal, and be sure to check out my YouTube channel. Join me as I have Transformers discussions, retrospectives, toy reviews, and more. You can also follow me on Twitter at Rodimus Primal, as well as Facebook and Instagram at Rodimus Primal Show. Transform and roll out, and be sure to check out my content till all are one. Well, it's a big party of the summer, folks. Let's go out with a bang. Do you like retro cartoons? Then Saturday Morning Rewind is the podcast for you. Join them each month as they talk about classic cartoons and interview legendary voice actors like Jim Cummings. I am the terror that flaps in the night. Corey Burton. Sometimes parties can be so funny. Rob Paulson. Sure, Vane, but how are we going to find chaps our size? Nancy Cartwright and many more. Eat my shorts. So grab a bowl of Lucky Charms. The magically delicious. Put on your hammer pants. Go to SaturdayMorningRewind.com. And be prepared to feel like a kid again. Once again, that's SaturdayMorningRewind.com. Saturday Morning Rewind was voted best podcast ever by its host, Tim Nidell. So it's got to be good. Discover a world of vintage and modern toys that's more than meets the eye with the Triple Takeover Toy Cast. Hosted by toy writers and photographers Toy Box Soapbox, 6 and TF Square One, this informal and chilled out series of discussions cover everything from vintage Transformers to Mask, Diaclone, Microman, and more, be it nostalgic or current. Whether you're a seasoned collector or a casual robot enthusiast, all are welcome. Triple Takeover Toy Cast. Hmm, a teenager with a big mouth. Not much has changed in 6,000 years. You obviously don't know who you're dealing with, Mr. Brazenhead. Really? Yeah, we're the Power Rangers. Woo! Where's my autograph book? Yeah, it is so fun. So, yes, folks, that's uh, that's going to do it for us. We really enjoyed it. We love the story. I love the twists with Shredder and Rita 
And like you said a moment ago at the end to set up a potential sequel, like now you are going to take me to this dimension X you speak of. So (laughs) next time we'll be hearing nothing but Pat Fraley in our heads, because I'm sure (laughs) whatever, whatever designs they end up coming up with for, for, Team and T eighty seven Krang. If they if they ever, I don't know if they're going to do a sequel. They obviously set it up that way. Hell, we didn't know that there was going to be a third Batman Team and T, and there was. Mm-hmm. So you know, who knows? I mean, I'm sure once Power Rangers gets through this Godzilla thing, Godzilla Power Rangers crossover, they're going to do something else, and that's that's awesome because there's always something next that we can go to. I'll start making my so, predictions for what kind of crazy <laughs> things they're going to pull off with all of those space Ninja Turtle characters. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what would you rate this zero to five, sir? Uh, you, you can't have this much fun and not rate the five. The art is yeah. fantastic. The writing is fantastic. The pace was fantastic. The density, I'm, I'm completely, I'm totally impressed. Yeah, absolutely. I am also going to give it a five. There is nothing in here that gave me pause. There's nothing in here that gave me the heebie-jeebies. There's nothing in here that I try my best not to be the annoying fanboy that will be like, that's not how it's supposed to be done, or that's not what that planet was called, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I try my best not to do that. And yeah, I, fives all around. Absolutely love this. So folks, coming up next in episode 479, as I mentioned at the beginning, we've got myself and my buddy Jesse Raz doing the final arc, the aftermath, the volume 14, which is issue 50 to, no, it's issue 51 to 55 of the Boom Studios Power Rangers comic series that will <laughs> air in April. Uh, I wanted to keep it to Mighty Morphin March, but sadly that just didn't happen, and that's okay, but it'll air in April. And, yeah. What do you got going on, sir? Anything? Uh, well, I, it, it seems like the, the pandemic is kind of wearing down, so I'm hoping that we're going to have a Geek Stuff Garage sale this year, assuming we don't mutate some new Borg variant of this coronavirus, but uh, we'll be outdoors selling nerdy stuff, and I'm sure there'll be a bunch of the Power Ranger stuff there. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I, I, I don't know. Did I tell you I can be found on Twitter now at, Yay! at Joe Reed geek. Um, I actually know how to use it now. Uh, you can also <laughs> find me on Facebook going through the geek stuff, garage sale, Facebook page. Uh, I know there's more ways to get a hold of me now, but, uh, yeah, if you can't find me through those two places, just ask Mike you, you, yep. and, and he'll put you in touch with me. Absolutely. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us here inside the pull bag. Make your great escape into comics. And for those of you listening to this on the Power Rangers uh, and from the command center, the usually how I end these is uh, make your great escape into comics and let the power protect you. Oh, yeah, that's their line. You've just heard the latest episode of The Pull Bag, the GCRN's first comic review and discussion podcast. There are several ways to get in touch with us and leave feedback for the show. You can visit the website, geekcastradio.com, where you can comment on the episode and all of our different podcasts. You can rate and leave a review for the show on iTunes. Be sure to leave us feedback. Become a fan of us on Facebook, facebook.com slash thepullbag. Send us an email, feedback at geekcastradio.com. Follow us on Twitter at thepullbag and at geekcastradio. So until next time, make your great escape into comics and unleash the geek in you. And let the power protect you.